introduce you, Amish, and maybe you can uh, 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 share some of your career highlights too, especially as we talk about scaling companies. So Amish started his career at uh, Microsoft after graduating from uh, UC San Diego. Did you learn to surf when you lived there? I, you know, it's one of my regrets. I did not learn. I was in the basement lab programming, building compilers. <laughs> so when I, when I retire, I'm moving back to San Diego. And, and you're going to learn to surf. Okay, yes. that sounds good to me. That sounds fantastic. Okay, well, I went to UCLA and I went to the beach uh, all the time to study. But I didn't learn to surf. <laughs> now you're rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's, uh, you know, I wasn't in the computer lab, that's for sure. Um, anyway. You, uh, you uh, went on to work at Amazon and you had a couple of really big roles. You uh, helped launch Prime Instant Video and you built a big team, very innovative team in Los Angeles from scratch, 500 plus engineers. You're responsible for product and engineering. So you have a lot of experience uh, scaling a tech organization. You also um, founded um, uh, uh, a ticketing platform uh, called Atom, which uh, you raised all kinds of money for, scaled and built an application people loved. So you have great founder experience. And uh, then you went to, to Stars, which is, how many of you have ever watched Stars, the, uh, the, the premium cable channel? Okay, so everybody knows who Stars is. You were the CTO there. I was. And uh, now you're at OfferUp. So, so tell us what took. Tell us a little bit about your Amazon experience, because I'm sure everyone wants to know. It, you know, is it like what we read <laughs> uh, first, and then, and then maybe you can tell us uh, a little bit about what you learned along the way scaling companies. So Amazon. So yeah. Start. Start with Amazon. Um, a lot of crying at my desk. No, no, it's, I, I, I kid, I kid. Under um, your desk. Yeah. Under, uh, under sorry. It. Yes. Right. Under crying my under desk. Under your desk. No. Um, you know. Uh, to be totally frank, I, I, jo I joined Amazon, uh, you know, very early in 2003. I was employee like 3,000. Uh, now there's like 600,000 people there. Um, so it was very, very cowboy, very early on. I, I moved from Microsoft across the lake to Amazon, um, and my parents were like mortified. They were like, why am I, why am I leaving Microsoft to go to this bookseller? Uh, and uh, what I would tell you is that uh, it was my formative years. It was my early 20s and 30s that I spent there. I can tell you I, I learned a lot. Um, it's a very, very customer-focused company. Um, they're in, uh, incredibly focused on uh, driving results and being metrics-driven. Um, so creating a culture of, of focusing on data, focusing on our customers, um, kind of what have you done for me lately kind of uh, attitude what became a second nature to me. So uh, for better or for worse, I didn't, I didn't think anything was different. It was a very normal experience for me. Um, but I, I can say that they hold, um, they hold their staff to a very high standard. Um, and I think that that has kind of rubbed off on me in the right way. That's awesome. Now, you took that experience and you started a company. Tell, tell, us, tell us what led you to that decision and then uh, some of the highlights along the way. Yeah, so, you know, my time at Amazon, you know, we did, I worked on a lot of different projects and a lot of different scale. Um, I was very focused on kind of building my career there. And at a certain point, I, um, I came to the conclusion of like, I wonder, can I do this on my own? Can I do it without the safety net of... Uh, you know, of Amazon and them taking care of all the, the payroll and keeping the lights on and all the other things that I think every entrepreneur in this room has struggled with and thought through and, and uh, had to deal with. And so um, I had started our, our Orange County site, um, grew it out to, you know, almost 600 people. And I said, I got to take the jump. And so um, a, friend of, a friend of a friend basically came to me and, and I, I get pitched all sorts of crazy startup ideas you know, auctions for dogs and all sorts of, you know, things that are, seem small in size or a little bit silly. And somebody came to me and said, Amish, there's five and a half billion empty movie theater seats every year. Like, could you fix that? Could you sell 1% of, of those empty seats? And I thought, man, this is, this is, like, this is very achievable. So um, I put together a deck. I walked it around kind of all the studios, meeting with uh, you know, a bunch of executives in the M&A side, on the, on the motion picture side. Um, after about a year, I finally hit 
uh, my first investor, and, and I'm sure many of you have felt this way before, but once you find your lead, then everybody follows very quickly. Um, and so I said, okay, time to jump. And so I, uh, I left the company. I, uh, I started, uh, 40 of my best engineers left with me, and we were off to the races. So it was a, um, it was a very fast start and a very aggressive start, but we, we basically wanted to disrupt the primary ticketing space. Uh, Fandango sells movie tickets. Um, we were focused on how do we do that first, and then you know can we get into concerts, sports, festivals, et cetera. So um, a long process, a lot of uh, fundraising, a lot of travel. Um, so <laughs> meeting all these movie theater owners, the chains, they, they're, they're family, family-run businesses in the middle of nowhere. You know, uh, so I, I um, it's a lot of hustle and a lot of hard work, but uh, it was a very satisfying experience. As you were, as you were building the company, what, what was the thing that kept you up at night most? You know, honestly, uh, there, there were two factors. One was this transition to assigned seating. Um, so I, I, I think in Miami, there's a lot of movement to, like, I get to pick my seats. That was a big factor in our ability to actually sell tickets digitally. So I, I was nervous that, am I early? Am I early to the market? Because the market hasn't completely shifted. You know, when you look at the coast, Miami, LA, New York, that's a very common thing. But when you get into the middle of the country, it's not as common. So. I was a little nervous that I, I came to the race a little early. Um, and then I think second is that I'm fighting an income, uh, you know, a 25 year old incumbent that is basically a sitting monopoly. Sure, uh, and, and top of mind for people. That's right, that's right. So creating a consumer brand, incredibly challenging, not something that I was accustomed to, so I had to flex my marketing muscles and my business development muscles. How do I find partnerships? And, and we ended up uh, doing deals with Coca-Cola and T-Mobile and many other kind of large providers to help amplify our message. Um, and I was, I was fortunate enough to have really amazing partners with those companies. Fantastic. Then you jumped off and, and, and you went to Stars as the CTO. Uh, what was their digital kind of footprint like at that time? It was, um, you know, it was a, it was a little antiquated. Um, a lot of on-prem facilities. Uh, we were uh, the team, the team I would say in Denver, uh, where their central operations are. And and I'll just give you a very small anecdote. This is an interesting point. Is like a lot of uh, broadcast. Uh, companies are based in Denver, and it's because of the of the physicality of Earth, right? So if you think of a, a sphere. And you think about Denver, Colorado being right in the middle of the United States. Imagine line of sight for a satellite on both sides. If you broadcast from Denver, your satellite can actually hit uh, in Asia and in Europe, and you could be located in the United States, of course, covering the United States. So we, you know, we had to look, I had to kind of stretch myself and think about problems differently, not just from a software perspective, but from a physical perspective too. And the goal was, how do, we, how do we transform our, our OTT platform you know, and taking the experience from Prime Video and really moving that, but also uh, you know, you know, upgrading and, and improving our satellite infrastructure and understanding where that's going to go in the next 5, 10, 15 years. So uh, I built my first 5.9 system. It was, uh, you know, it's, it was a really good learning experience for me. Fantastic. And then, and then you went to OfferUp. First, first, before you tell us about uh, why you went, tell us a little bit about OfferUp. Because I, how many of you have uh, the OfferUp app on your phone? Okay, so a good number. Yeah, so so OfferUp is a uh, is a local is a mobile first local marketplace. We want to help cu uh, customers connect buyers and sellers to uh, connect and and prosper. Right, everybody has stuff in their house that they want to get rid of. Everybody's looking for a great deal. Um, Nick, our founder, uh, has done a tremendous job of kind of bootstrapping this marketplace. You know, earlier we were talking about the, the gentleman that's going to be talking about that. It's an incredibly challenging problem, um, but it, and it takes a lot of fortitude and thoughtfulness. But he stumbled upon this idea and, and saw that, hey, everybody's walking around with the camera in their pocket now, with the iPhone. I can make this a lot easier. And when you think about Craigslist or eBay, it, particularly uh, back in the day, it was incredibly painful to like list something. Twenty some steps, I think it was horrible. You had to Crazy. verify your account, upload pictures. It was a nightmare on 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 Craigslist, and eBay was not much easier. Not much easier. And and I think that they, when you look at the offer of experience, they did a really really thoughtful job of 
keeping it brain dead easy. It is, it is so easy. If you haven't used it, you haven't tried it, I would encourage all of you just to just download the app and check it out uh, because it will shock you how simple it is to find something on the platform to buy and uh, how easy it is to kind of get rid of stuff out of your own house that you don't need anymore. Can you give people a sense of the scale of the business, uh, you, you, either in terms of monthly active users or gross merchandise value or items listed or anything that's going to kind of show the magnitude of the platform? Yeah, so this is, this is the kind of shocking thing that, um, that surprised me when I interviewed with, uh, with the company and we were really kind of going and diving deep. Um, there's, there's over, whoa, that's the airplane. Is it an airplane I, or is it the air conditioning? Uh, I think we're safe either way. I think we're taking off. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've been wanting to go to space. Yeah. This is our chance. <laughs> um, so today, offer up. Um, we have o over uh, 85 million installs across the country. About 45 million actives a year. Um, the crazy statistic is is that we um, our average user, our average active user, is getting 35 engagements a month. Just think about that for a second. That's like a social media app, but it's actually, we're a shopping app. So people are engaged, they're looking, they're browsing, they use it as an entertainment vehicle. It's, it's a shocking amount of customer engagement and we're doing tens of billions of dollars in, in GMV on the platform. So I'm incredibly uh, impressed with what the team has built and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of the team to put some rocket fuel in the engine. What, and so why did you jump in? So part of it was was the uh, the customer engagement and and the uh, and the uh, quality of the product, the ease of use. I think that the fact that they were kind of very customer focused. But I think for any opportunity that I was looking at, kind of going forward, there were two dimensions that I really cared about: was how big is the, the is the TAM, the addressable market, and two, um, you know, what's the culture of the company like? Uh, it's those two things kind of combine. If I'm going to be working hard every day, every night, I'm going to be in the trenches with my team, I want to know that I'm going to enjoy working with them. So that's a, that's a critically uh, important part of the puzzle. And then when you think about, um, you know, about the market size, this is not a million dollar uh, TAM. This is not a billion dollar TAM. This is a trillion dollar TAM. And it's very hard to talk about, like, what other businesses can you talk about that are like that? But retail and commerce, not just e-commerce, but commerce in general, and people buying and selling goods, and to be candid, we haven't even started thinking about internationally yet. We're really focused on growth in the United States. But all around the world, when you think about goods, services, and all the other things that you could do by creating a marketplace like this, it's an enormous opportunity. Good reason to join, glad you did. And you're the CTO there, so what, what, what are your top three priorities at, at OfferUp now? Yeah, so um, my my focus is is uh, is is kind of threefold. Uh, I think first is is to continue hiring great individuals. Uh, I mean, I already started with a great team, and I'm super excited with what I'm growing. But like, we're we're going to be adding more folks, and in fact, that's why I'm here in Miami, where we've established an office, and we're growing here. Um, I think the second thing is is to create a um, operational and engineering uh, discipline that. You know, we're transitioning out of being kind of a, a, a scrappy startup and really moving towards um, becoming an enterprise level company. I mean, we can't operate at, at this level of scale without having that level of discipline. So that's a, that's a big part. And then of course, um, you know, I, the culture is so important to me. I wanna make sure that we keep continuing to, for, uh, to uh, uh, fortify that and really grow that. What makes the culture special at, uh, at OfferUp? So this, this is a great question. Um, it's, we have we have we have a leadership a set of leadership principles and we have a set of operating principles. Um, the operating principles are things that you you know like customer focus and and stay scrappy and and all the things that you kind of like normally are accustomed to. But there's a section called DNA, driven, neighborly, and adaptable, and it's a, it's an important part of the of of being successful as a startup. You know I I use the phrase uh, startup stomach. You know, who has the, the stomach to handle the high highs and low lows? You know, many of you founders, I know there's like, it's a, it's a lonely time, right? And, and teams will experience uh, incredible big victories that will make everybody super excited. And there'll be, cha you know, there'll, be, there'll be problems too that people will be down in the dumps, but you have to have that kind of internal fortitude and you have to be driven to be able to work through that. The second part of it is, is really na that neighborliness. Um, and this is, this is a critical uh, piece that I, I, I will call out, is um, we want people 
to want to work with each other. We want them to help each other. I want, I want individuals that will know that we win as a team or we lose as a team. Um, and that's, that's a, there is a big difference between that and some other big companies that uh, I've worked with in the past. And it, that it's not about me. It's about the success of the organization. And I think the rest of my team and the rest of the executives really feel that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, a very a small anecdote about this. Uh, my, uh, my, first week, my first week at the company, um, you know, some of the execs pulled me aside. I said, Amish, we're, um, we're going to go see the Avengers. We've rented out this great movie theater. We have a taco truck, and we're going to have margaritas, and everybody's going to have a great time. And I'm like, amazing. Right? Like, we're going to have a good time. We'll go see the movies. They said, we want you to uh, send out the email announcing it, and you take credit for it. And I, I asked, I was like, I, I didn't do anything about this. And they said, no, no, but you're coming into a big role. You have a lot to do. We want you to be successful. This is a fast way for you to make friends, and everybody's going to love this, so you, you take credit for it. And I, and I honestly gone, I was like, what, what is going on here? But I, I did it, and I was getting high fives for like months afterwards. <laughs> but you know, that's the kind of people they are. They genuinely wanted me to see, see me succeed. They could have easily taken credit for the hard work that they did to arrange all that. And it's a small thing, you go to the movies, but uh, the fact that they, they proactively offered it just showed me the level of character and the kindness and the neighborliness that they have. And uh, I just, uh, I've seen that out of them, you know, consistently for the last nine months. You know, it's funny you, you tell that, uh, that story. Uh, I just, I can't help but, but think about uh, Nick Huzar, the founder. When I invested in OfferUp, I think there were three employees and 3,000 users in Seattle. And you tell this story about OfferUp, and I see the founder in the culture. So when I was looking at investing in OfferUp, I met with Nick a couple of times. And one time, he, he was in New York, and he came over to my my house and met my kids. I mean, really, that just doesn't happen in in this business. I mean, especially in a place like New York, and uh, and he's just has a kind of a very wholesome outlook on life. And so to hear you talk about the culture just makes me smile because that's what I saw in him when I invested. So it it just goes to show you that culture is built um, from the founder on. And one of the most important things is hiring people who help to expand the culture, build the culture, and scale the culture, which is uh, why he was probably very, very happy to find you. That's awesome. Okay, so you've had this, this uh, we'll talk about Miami in a second. I just want to go back to one thing about your kind of your, your, your career. So when I looked at your career, I thought, my gosh, we have such a superstar in our midst. I mean, I was amazed. Uh, and you. everything was up and to the right. <laughs> Did you have any setbacks along the way? And if so, what were they? <laughs> You know, um, I, I, I would say, look, every career has its ups and downs. I've been fortunate to have incredible mentors surrounding, surrounding me, um, really great teachers. Uh, you know, I include my, my parents in that, but uh, in my professional career, uh, you know, my, my managers and the executives that I work for at Amazon and at Microsoft uh, all taught me a lot, of, a lot of things. And even in failure, um, where I didn't do the right thing, and in fact, our COO, Bill, who, uh, who joined OfferUp as well, he was my boss at Amazon when I, when I was running Prime Video. So You must have done a decent job if, That's you, right. if you got hired at OfferUp. That's right. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I would say uh, I've, been, I've been blessed with the right opportunities and the right uh, trajectory. It's a lot of hard work, of course, but um, I, I, can't, I can't say that it's just me. I, I had a lot of help on the way. The one thing that I will uh, say that um, in my career moves and in my career changes, I made I would characterize as one significant mistake that I um, that I corrected very quickly, which was I did not pay attention to the culture in one of my moves. Um, I will uh, I will be oblique about which move that was, but um, I will say that. Um, I was so eager to kind of learn and move and grow and achieve the kind of next goal in my career set that I lost sight of the fact that um, I want to I want to actually work with the people that I want to work with and and do they care about the same things that I care about and fundamentally this is and this is the most important thing we can have similar goals but if we don't have similar values the train comes off the tracks really really quickly. And so for me, um, I won't ever make that mistake again. I'm going to really always focus on companies that I share values with and that, that and we can always build on top of that. So 
That's, that's great advice for all of us. Now, um, uh, I've flown from Miami to Seattle, and it's a hella long flight. It, it does, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you could fly to Australia, and it would feel shorter than this flight. <laughs> so what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I'm thrilled, but w why Miami? So this is this is it. Couldn't be further from Seattle. It, you know, it's uh, it's worth it. I'm gonna start with that. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, if you had to make me choose between Seattle and Miami, I mean, come on, the it, winter alone. I yes. But what about the summer? Uh, I've heard August. Want, uh, listen, I'll come visit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I, I could tell you this. Um, you know, when when we were evaluating where we wanted to go, um, because this is this is OfferUp's first expansion outside of, uh, out of outside of the Seattle area, um, we were really focused on a, on a few different criteria, and and first and foremost is where can I find talent, um, and looking at the companies here, looking at the innovation that was happening here. I was super excited about the quality of people that we could find. We, we were interviewing candidates that were um, coming from Miami, trying to move to Seattle uh, for job opportunities. And I was saying like, wow, the universities are putting out great people. There's talented individuals in this market. And so I thought, first, first one item, check, all right? So second item, um, you know, uh, not to put too fine of a point on it, is that it wasn't colonized by the fan companies. Right, um, you know, when when we look at uh, you know Amazon, Google, Facebook, Salesforce, you know, ByteDance now, Apple, they come into markets and they eat all the supply. Yeah, they vacuum up the talent like and, so fast. And the market is so competitive in Seattle I, uh, that it forces us to make unoptimized decisions, and we can't really focus on you know finding the people exactly the people that we want. We compromise in certain ways, but we're very lucky that we have a very loyal group of people and very talented group of people that offer up, but the market's hard. The market's hard, just like the Bay Area. And so uh, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to go to a market that already had that same exact problem. Third, um, you know, uh, and, I, and I don't know, to, do, do I ascribe this to kind of the Latin American culture or the Miami vibe, but people are friendly, they're hardworking, they're neighborly, they, um, they're loyal, like, they, like it's, it's exactly the cultural fit that I was talking about before, that neighborliness and that dri drive and that adaptability, I just find generally available in this market. And so that's not something that I would describe as uh, Seattle is known for, or, or San Francisco is known for, or New York or LA is known for. Um, you know, I, I was making an offhanded comment, like coming down the elevator every morning in the hotel, people say hello to me. And I'm like, this is amazing. They're like, everybody's so friendly, you know? I, I speak pidgin Spanish, and uh, my, my, uh, my taxi cab uh, driver from the airport, he, he didn't speak English, and I was trying to communicate with him. And he was so gracious about my, my poor Spanish. He was, like, excited to the fact that I was trying. Um, you know, just, it's a general uh, feeling and, uh, of this kind of uh, family. And, and that's, that's, honestly, we, we wanted to come to a place that that was an easy find for us. And then lastly, um, you know, Miami's a big offer uptown. I want to be close to my customers. You know, 17% of Miami County has offer up installed. Just think about it that way. We have Phoenix has 21%, LA has 16%, Seattle has 16%. We have deep penetrations in many of these markets, but Miami's a fantastic town for us to get close to customers, find great talent, find the right cultural fits, and we still have uh, time and supply available for all of these things. That's fantastic, and I, I totally agree with you. I moved here six years ago, and this, this community, the tech community, has been incredibly welcoming, and I've made, made many friends and made a home here, and I, I hope the same for you, for you all at OfferUp. Now, what, um, you're in Wynwood, uh -huh. right? What kind of people are you looking for? So primarily today, we're, we're focused on uh, hiring engineering talent. So that's, that's our focus. We, um, we opened up the office in our job recs about three months ago. We, we said, we're going we're gonna to put our toe in the water. We're going to put uh, you know, 16 uh, roles in this, in this office. Three months later, we're basically full. Uh, we were expecting it to take six months to go find all these people. But talent finds talent. And we found some really great folks. And they referred some really great folks. So we're growing very quickly. Um, you know, my expectation is that we're you know we're going to probably double or triple by the end of next year uh, here you know I'm I'm so impressed you know I, the last few days I've been spending you know doing one on ones with the team doing design reviews really 
pleasantly getting back to uh, being a builder and really focusing on the technology, which is very nice. Um, and the team here has exceeded all my expectations. They are incredibly talented folks. They know what they're doing, and uh, and they're going fast. And I, I'm I, I want. 30 more of them, and you know, so, but we want to be prudent about how fast we grow. We don't want to get over our skis, so we'll be thoughtful in that expansion, but I'm, I'm long Miami. Now, what experience level are you looking for, and are you just hiring uh, engineers, or ooh, 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 what, kind of, what kind of folks are you, you hiring here? Yeah, so, so today we're, we're really focused on engineering talent, um, I think, but in the future, uh, we're going to be adding more product management roles, we're going to be adding more operations roles, some sales folks. Um, so my expectation is that we're going to grow this office to be um, uh, multidiscipline. Um, and I think that gives us good, uh, it gives us good value because we'll have different walks of life, different perspectives, different connections to our customers. I think it's important, particularly when building a remote site like this, that um, that, that happens. And I think the second part of this is that's, that's super important that I'll, I'll call out um, is it's important that the team here has a very clear, focused charter. And so they're not just an extension of the folks in Bellevue. It's not like, oh, I have a manager in Bellevue. Send the work we don't want to do to uh, Miami. That's, that's not exactly, it. No, no, not at all. In fact, the team here is going to ha have a very strategic um, uh, and valuable part of our company's roadmap. They're going to be, um, they're going to have a pride of ownership and they're going to be uh, a very, uh, um, you know, focused on delivering a big puzzle piece for our continued growth and success. That's fantastic. Um, uh, anything else you'd like to add about the, the, the company or uh, what you're trying to build here before we open it up for questions? No, I'm just, I, I can tell you this, I, I, I can't say enough. I, the last few days I've been here, I'm going to be coming back often. Um, this is an amazing town, amazing group of people. You guys have created an amazing community. I've, I, I've, I feel so welcome already. Uh, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful and thankful for the fact that you guys have invited me to be a part of this community and a part of this family. And uh, I, I hope to... Uh, help all of you succeed as much as I can. So I, I'm, uh, I, I think we can make this uh, city really thrive and prosper. Fantastic. Let's take some questions from the audience. Uh, I think Maria is going to walk around with a mic. Oh, you're taking mine. Uh -huh. oh, no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm joking. Question. Uh, what kind of engineering? And what are the demographics of this engineering that you have found so far? What are they, Latin, American? European, a local Miami raised, what universities did they go to, and what kind of specifically education did they have? So, uh, I'm going to repeat the question, uh, what is the kind of profile of the, the, the engineers that we have on site, what, what was their education, background, et cetera, is that right? Um, so we, we've, um, many of them are local, I would say, of the first 15, I would say uh, 12, I believe, are local. Um, the other three were actually born and raised in Miami that had left and gone to the Bay Area or Seattle, and when they found out that we were opening up an office uh, here, they were very excited and reached out to us and said, I want to come back and I want to move back to Miami. So um, I think that we, um, we kind of embraced that and said, okay, of course, let's figure out how to get you, get you back home. And uh, as far as kind of the backgrounds go, um, very diverse backgrounds. Um, several of the folks are, are local, um, uh, uh, from local universities. We have uh, one, of our, one of our managers is an adjunct professor from U of M. Um, did I say that right? UM or U of M? Uh, UM. UM. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still learning. <laughs> well, I'll get there. Um, so uh, definitely um, the local universities, FIU, UM, are producing really great talent. So I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of the folks that are coming out of the, those programs. Um, at the moment, uh, all the folks that we're hiring um, have been at a, kind of a senior level. So I'll continue to do that until... Um, until we have kind of an established office that has the right infrastructure, processes, uh, systems uh, in place. Um, that's a big part of my leadership style is that I want everything to be basically, uh, I want to be able to go sit on a beach one day and not do anything. So I have to create systems uh, that people can kind of work without me in involved. So the team is still forming and norming and storming, but we'll, we're going to get to the spot where we're going to start expanding that into a college program as well.
Hi. First of all, thank you for coming. And I'm a professor at the University of Miami, so you're welcome to visit us as well. My question is, you talked about the roadmap that you have. Can you expand on what kind of roadmap you have for Miami versus what you have in Seattle? Uh, on, a, on a people basis or on a product basis? Product basis. And what, you plan, what do you plan for this group in Miami to excel in or be different than your other group in Seattle? That's a great question. So um, without me getting into projects that we have not announced yet, um, what I can say is that, yeah, uh, so, so the way we've organized our, uh, the, the way I've organized the team is basically we've created a kind of a domain-based model. So we have teams focused on ordering, payments, fulfillment, you know, all the kind of categories of, of, of uh, kind of high cohesion, low coupling uh, blocks of work, and uh, the Miami team has a what I would characterize as a very uh, focused charter to ensure that we're we're continuing to support our our business consumers, um, and so that is going to become a pretty substantial part of our growth path. So, on a product perspective, we have new experiences. Um, we really want to stay customer focused and and help with that. But I, I would generally say that each of the team member, each of the domain teams, has their critical component of of how we're going to succeed. So, uh, you know, generally speaking, um, I, I'll go back to we all win together, we all lose together. They, it's not a uh, they, Miami can't win by itself. They need Seattle, and Seattle needs Miami, and and we go back and forth like that. Right. So the, the the question was: Are we? Are does the Miami office help bridge the gap I into Latin America? I think the simple answer is: uh, I think from a people expansion perspective, it definitely gives us option value. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny. Uh, I, I was having dinner with the team, and uh, I, I was I was telling them I want to get a Spanish tutor. Um, what what kind of Spanish should I learn? And boy, that was a contentious question. <laughs> After a few drinks, that, that, that people started getting rowdy uh, about, you know, should I learn Cuban Spanish or Venezuelan Spanish or Colombian Spanish? Um, and so it's 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 uh, Miami is so cosmopolitan in that way that it provides an opportunity and a gateway, as you said, to a huge amount of the world. And so. I, I value that as kind of an important uh, piece of the puzzle as, as, as we continue to think about expansion. But from a product and, and operating perspective, we're really focused on the United States. We're really going to be staying here for a little while. There's a lot of, of road to hoe, and that's where we're going to be focused. These are great questions, and thank you for having me. What is your competitive strategy for the future? Because you probably have some ideas of what you are looking to do in the future. So what is our competitive strategy for the future? So I would say from a product perspective, you know, we, we really focus on helping uh, buyers and sellers succeed. So when you think about one of the most important KPIs, if we have a new seller that is, is posting something on OfferUp, if we can help optimize that experience and help them sell an item faster, what ends up happening is, is that they bring on new selection onto our platform, customers find it, they buy it, right? And uh, the seller is happy, so he says, oh, I, I want to add more stuff to this thing. And so now we have more in inventory selection, and round and round the flywheel goes. So uh, I would say from a, a differentiated perspective, we're not focused on how many ads we can serve you. We're not focused on things that are not about our marketplace and about our customers. Um, I said the second dimension is we're really focused on trust and safety. So when we want to be the most uh, reputable marketplace as well, um, we spend a lot of time building out, uh, you know, uh, complex systems, data science models. Um, you know, we have staff that does kind of risk and fraud analysis because we want people to feel comfortable that, you know, if my girlfriend or my mom wants to go sell something, I'm not worried for her. And I, I don't know that I would do the same for some of my other competitors. So those are the two ways that I think we differentiate ourselves is focus on our buyers and sellers and make sure that we're trustworthy. So uh, welcome to Miami. Um, in your dealings with Jeff Bezos, you know, your previous uh, roles, did he ever talk about growing up in Miami and going to high school down here? Uh, 
and did that influence your decision to come yourself? That's a great question. So I had the, I had the privilege of, of meeting with Jeff nearly once a month. Um, you know, we worked on a lot of different projects. Uh, he did not talk about his personal life a whole lot. It was very, very kind of business focused. So, um, so the simple answer is no, um, but, the, uh, but the, the, the lessons that he taught and the lessons that I grew up with inside of Amazon helped me find this opportunity. You know, I'm zigging where everybody else is zagging and, uh, and I think that that's provided a, a unique opportunity for, for myself and for the company. Hi, uh, you had talked about uh, um, competition from the fan, from the you know Facebook, Amazon, and you know I'm a software engineer, so I'm I'm very aware of that. Um, my question for you is, uh, based on that, have you ever considered uh, uh, remote work um, as as a possible solution to that? Um, is that is that something you would consider in the future or something like that? And then my second question is, you know, you're trying to hire engineers. Um, but I'm not aware of your, I don't, I don't know what you guys, uh, what the stack is. Not, this is a very engineer-centric question. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So to answer the first question about remote work, um, this, is a, this is, I would characterize as a very kind of uh, hot topic in today's uh, discussion about recruiting, hiring, retention, et cetera. Um, Having worked at big companies, having worked at small companies, having worked at established product groups, having worked on new product groups, here's my here's my uh, you know uh, two cents about why why that works in some cases and why that doesn't work in other cases. I, I would tell you that if you have an established company that you're not doing a lot of innovation or invention, you're really just optimizing systems, then I think remote work makes a lot of sense. It's very easy to manage, it's very easy to, to control, you have clear objectives and KPIs that you can, you can work to. Um, you know, in a system like this where uh, here in Miami we're building a ton of new software and the specifications are like, there's no, there's no spec that comes over the fence and we're like, oh, just build that. It's a lot of like, that's wrong, that seems dumb, that's really smart, we should do more of that. You know, there's a lot of arguing and bickering and, you know, uh, and, and celebration and uh, discussions and hallway conversations. You know, we were, uh, we were deep in discussion uh, two days ago and the team was like, Amish, we're gonna make you a cafecito and we're gonna, we're gonna sit down and hammer this out. I'm like, oh, okay, and it's like little, little rocket fuel that you get, <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, very, people are very passionate about their coffee around here as well, I, I've, I've found. Um, more so than Seattle, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. Starbucks. No, not yeah. <laughs> no, no, these guys will not drink Starbucks. <laughs> um, so my, my two cents is, is that I think that it's really important to, um, when you have new product development and you, you are uh, working on developing ideas that are not fully formed, I think having people in the same building makes a huge difference. Hallway conversations, whiteboarding sessions, walks to lunch, walks to coffee, all of these things add up to improved communications and improved thoughtfulness. Uh, I'm not opposed to remote work. I'll just tell you that I don't, I don't personally know how to manage it effectively. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of companies manage it effectively. And, and unless it's really well established, as we talked about, then I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, people want to work one day or two days from home. I think that makes a lot of sense, and that's very easy to manage. But that human connection, I think, is a big, big deal, particularly for small startups, right? And your tech stack? And my tech stack. Oh, yes. Um, so we're in the process of kind of reinventing ourselves. Um, you know, uh, we, we're gonna be, we're, we're a Java-based shop, we're, we're building all of our new services uh, using uh, containers, Kubernetes, um, our data science and, and uh, data engineering models, we're, we're switching over to TensorFlow. Um, you know, our database, uh, you know, is, you know, Dynamo and Aurora and, and a few other folks. So I would, I would characterize it as a fairly modern stack um, with proven technologies. We're not like all the way in the tip top of the future, but stuff that has proven scale because we're, uh, we're operating with billions of page views uh, a month, uh, like probably a day. I have to go double check some of the metrics, but there is a substantial amount of scale. So I can't afford to be too experimental but um, many of the kind of, uh, kind of penultimate technology sets that are out there have been well tested and battle hardened and that's what we were focused on. 
Thank you for coming to Miami. I wanted to pick your brain a little bit coming from, you coming from the outside. Um, how's your access to infrastructure here? How do, you, how do you feel the connection to the internet, to the NAP, uh, the ability to connect and hook up uh, versus where you come from? Obviously, you have a diverse uh, experience, but how do you find us here, here so we can either good things that we're doing, things we can scale up, and for all those who want to start up new companies or starting ones? Well, I think the, communi the community is amazing. Um, I think I'm finding everything that I, I'm looking for right here. The, the quality of the people, the, the resourcing. Um, there's tons of fantastic uh, investors and VCs in this market. Um, I, I, uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of something that I, I, I'm disappointed in. So I, everything's been great so far. Um, I'd have to give that a little bit more thought to f give you some constructive feedback, but so far, this has been an incredibly welcoming opportunity for me. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Tam from Duo. Uh, also, thanks for coming. I wanted to piggyback off one of the things you said earlier. Um, you mentioned that coming here to Miami was a way to get closer to customers. You mentioned that you have density here or penetration here. Uh, my question is, what is your process or what is your methodology for innovating for customers? How do you validate, de-risk, things like that? That's a, it's a great question. Um, and I'm going to give you the, the very startup answer. Walk around and talk to them. We have tons of businesses that use OfferUp today. We have tons of customers that use OfferUp today. Uh, Nick, our founder, exemplifies this. He will literally, you know, once a month, will go out and, uh, and go to downtown and start talking to shops and say, are you using OfferUp? And they say, yes. And he says, tell me what you like, what you don't like. Tell, and, and then they'll say no. And he says, let me just set up your account. I'm going to take some pictures for you. And we're going to get these things listed. And they're going to drive traffic into your store. They're going to drive value for you. Um, it's one of those things where I would say, uh, you know, with a company like ours, it's just about hustle. And I, and I use the word in the best sense. Uh, now, do we add kind of formal usability testing? Do we do we do all the kind of standard practices of, you know, okay, we have A-B testing in, in our platform. We're a culture metric, so basically any feature that we roll out, we do A-B testing with. Yes, yes to all of those. But the thing that I'm most proud of is that we're not afraid to get our hands dirty and just walk down the street and say hello. Sorry about that. Um, the, the time in the middle, right? The ideation process. Is there? What does that look like for your team? Yeah. So, so the the question was, what is what is the ideation process that gets us to the point where we can actually put a product out there in front of customers? Is that a fair? Yeah. Yeah. So we follow. We follow. Um, you know. So as I mentioned before, uh, my my previous boss, Bill, used to run all the video and music at Amazon, and I worked for them there. He was at Amazon for 15 years. I was there for nearly 11. Um, we follow our, what's called the PR FAQ process. Um, and so the the simple way to describe this is is that we write a press release first, and say, if we were to launch a feature like X, what would we write in the press release? And if we write it and we can't get excited about it ourselves, we're like, who cares? Then it's not a good idea to begin with. Um, if we do think it's a good idea, then we, fresh, we, uh, we write through our FAQs. And we write every question and answer that we can write. And, and that distills it down to a very, very sharp point to say, what are we building it? Why are we building it? Who's it for? And that provides real clarity for everybody around the table. The next step after that is we go and create market, uh, you know, like a, P a fake PNL, and say, what are the assumptions that we would have to make to to kind of figure this stuff out? Um, what what would make this business work? What would not make this work? Where is the model sensitive to that? So there's a lot of Excel work, and we work with our finance team on that. As a process point, when we're working as a company, we actually just went through this process a few months ago. Um, our product management team, our engineering leadership. We wrote nearly uh, 20 of these PR FAQs. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline. And ideas that we thought off the cuff were like, hey, this is a really great idea. We should go do this. Once you write it down and you look at the market opportunity and you look at the sensitivity for success, is it, you know, can I win? Is it big enough? And is it worth it? 
it has to meet all three of those criteria for us to actually go and do. And so out of the 20 plus documents that we wrote, all you know, 15, 20 pages each and a lot of hard work, we ended up looking at three and saying, these are the three that we actually care about. So um, we take a very, uh, I would characterize as a subjective and objective model to this. This process doesn't necessarily always work, but at least it, it separates the wheat from the chaff pretty quickly. Yes, yes, yeah, and, 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 and honestly, many companies have adopted it. It's not, it's, you know, as far as I understand, it started there at Amazon, and Jeff kind of led that process, but tons of companies use it, and I kind of uh, live and breathe it uh, myself. Like, I, I not only drank the Kool-Aid, but I make the Kool-Aid now. It's, um, and, it, and, and here's, here's another part that I would tell you, is as like an engineering leader, uh, you know, when I was young, I never thought that, like, my writing skills would matter that much, but... Um, really, it matters a whole lot. If you can't, you know, people, people skate away by creating kind of fluffy PowerPoint decks and they kind of hand wave over details, but man, does it take discipline to have to write a six-page document and really be thoughtful and clear about what you're talking about and why it matters for customers. It forces critical thinking, and, and it sounds like a lot of busy work, but I, I promise you there's substantial value to it. Jim, and you're going to do because you're the closest. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> a lot of pressure here. <clears throat> so really quickly, thank you again. Um, so uh, this is more for a younger person. So I'm a, I'm a senior in college, and I'm, I'm about to start my career, and, and I want to get into tech. I'm looking for a product manager role. But you know how you started in, in Microsoft and then Amazon, and you kind of had that experience there that was really formative in your younger uh, years. What would you recommend to someone like me who wants to stay in Miami, and it is growing, but um, maybe there's not, there's only like 15 positions in like a great company like OfferUp, like what, what would you recommend to someone like me who's just starting their career? Thank you. Yeah, so I, he, here's, here's what I would tell you, is that, that hustle matters. Um, first, first and foremost, you know, in a market like this, there's a ton of innovative startups that I'm seeing. I've met several last night at dinner. Uh, I, like, I'm looking at a room full of, of very entrepreneurial folks. Um, find something that you can really get behind and get passionate about. Um, second is be prepared for a lot of hard work. Um, I can tell you this, that the thing that separated me from the pack was I was willing to kind of just, I, willing to, to uh, push harder than everybody else, and that helped me get my, my foot in the door in a lot of places. Third, I would tell you is, um, you know, yes, there's, there might be a scarcity of opportunity here, um, but that's growing, that's changing all the time. So find somebody, find companies that you admire, find, find leaders that you admire, and really like hit your wagon to them because they're going to help you learn as fast as possible. You know, as you think about um, what companies you want to look at and where you want to interview, I think that's an incredibly important part of it. Is that earlier in your career, it's all about the people that you work for. Learn, learn, learn as much as you can. That's that's the best advice I can give you. Yeah.